So, I know you're thinking to yourself, what am I going to do today? Let's learn about how T cells mature. T cell development. T cell development. Nothing more exciting. So we've got T cell development. What goes on? Well, we're initially going to have prothymocytes. So, prothymocytes, so something before we get to a T cell that begins to develop in the thymus, and eventually we'll get different T cell lineages, so different T cells. So let's talk about how we get there. Initially we have this prothymocyte. This prothymocyte is a T cell precursor, and it's going to be, be made in the bone marrow. So it's going to be made in the bone marrow. It quickly develops and travels to the thymus. So it's going to be made in the bone marrow, but quickly develops and goes to the thymus. Because in the thymus, this is where most of the T cell development happens. Uh, B cells are going to mature in the bone marrow, while T cells will occur in the thymus. Easy, because B cells, bone marrow. T cells, thymus. Easy. T cells, thymus. B cells, bone marrow. But we're just going to talk about T cells right now. Uh, because these, this has an interesting kind of pathway. So once in the thymus, we've got these prothymocytes. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a cortex. So the cortex is going to be the outer layer, and the inner layer is going to be the medulla. So cortex is going to be outer, medulla is middle. And you're going to see that in the adrenal glands. You're going to see that in the kidney. That's, the cortex is going to be the outside kind of capsule, while the medulla is going to be in the middle, M for middle. Um, okay, so what's going to happen? Our prothymocyte is going to travel to the thymus. It now becomes a T cell precursor. That T cell precursor is going to start in the cortex. So we're going to start out here and it's going to work its way into the middle. So this thymus, it's going to be derived from the third brachial arch. So the third brachial arch is going to develop the thymus. The thymus is going to be bigger in children and it more involutes as we get older. So the thymus will be very prominent in children. Uh, it's going to be, um, be more prominent in children. I'll leave it at that. Okay, so we've got a cell here. It's going to develop in the cortex first, and it'll work its way to the medulla. So we've got this T cell precursor, and it's got a T cell receptor, T cell receptor, TCR. And what it is, is it's going to be CD3 positive. It's going to be CD4 positive. It's going to be CD8 positive. Holy cow, it's got a lot of markers on it. It's got so much markers on its cell surface, it doesn't know what it's doing yet. So, what do each of these mean? Well, let's start with CD3. CD3 is going to indicate that it's a T cell. That's all it means, is it's a cell marker for T cells. CD4 positive means that's a marker for T helper cells. So, all T cells will have CD3 on the outside. CD4 positive cells are going to indicate that the cell is a T helper cell. And CD8 positive means it's a cytotoxic T lymphocyte. So why does this one have all three? It's because it can become a T helper cell. It can become a cytotoxic T lymphocyte. So you want all the markers there because it can become, uh, it can become these subtypes. So you'd expect that this, and the T cell receptors could be also found on all the T cells. So what we have two different routes that we can go. We can either become a CD8 positive or a CD4 positive. Also has the CD3 as well. I'm going to stop writing it in because gets a little messy. It's also going to have the T cell receptors that I'm not going to write in as well. So what's going to happen is we're going to get rid of, we're going to stop displaying the CD4 or the CD8 so we get just one instead of both. Uh, what this is going to do, we're going to get this through uh, apoptosis or cell neglect. Uh, as the cell develops, as this prothymocyte develops, and now it's the T cell precursor, 
and uh, as it develops, it's going to lose its receptors. If it doesn't lose its receptors, we're going to get apoptosis. We're going to get apoptosis, or we could get cellular neglect. So we're not going to develop it anymore. Eventually, the cell will die. Uh, either way is the same. We're going to get rid of those cells. So the cells that express now just one are going to be good. So this is called uh, positive selection. We are just making it so we have CD8 or CD4. We're getting rid of some of this other stuff that's attached there. So this is positive selection and it's going to occur in the cortex. Kind of an important concept to, to understand. Positive selection occurs in the cortex. So we've got our T cell receptor, we've got our CD3 and our CD8. What's going to happen is it's going to go to the medulla. And once in the medulla, we're going to get something called negative selection. Negative selection is where we get rid of these T cells. So let's say we develop a whole bunch of T cells, but you know, every one out of a thousand, one might be self-reactive. So we want to get rid of those self-reactive uh, T cell precursors. Because if it's self-reactive, we don't want it to be circulating within the body, reacting with the body, damaging stuff. So we want to get rid of those. And that's where the negative selection comes in. And this is based on T cell receptor strength binding strength. So in the thymus, if the T cell receptor binds really strongly to the antigens and the in the in the molecules within the thymus, you know that it would bind other stuff within the body really tightly. So if it's a really strongly binding T cell receptor on this cell and it binds the thymus really strongly, what's going to happen is we're going to need to get rid of it through the apoptosis or cellular neglect. We don't want cells within our body that react. Let's say the T cell binding is weak. That's good. We want a weak binding because that means it's probably not going to bind to the antigens present in our body. So negative selection rules out self-reactivity. Positive selection is getting rid of the excess cellular markers. We're differentiating uh, our T cell precursors into CD8 positive or CD4 positive primarily. So once we've gone through positive selection, once we've gone through negative selection, we leave that medulla. So we worked in the cortex, then we went to the medulla. And now we're gonna leave the medulla and go to a lymph node. And that's gonna be the final uh, location for our T cell. Now we have different types of T cells. We're going to have this cell that's, I'll draw every molecule out, TCR. We're going to have the T cell receptor, we're going to have a CD3, and this one will be a CD, let's say, 8. And then we're also going to have another cell. This one will have a T cell receptor, still a CD3, meaning it's a T cell. And we've got a CD4 positive. All right, so we've got two different pathways. Now let's talk about what each of these mean. So the CD8 positive is going to be a cytotoxic T lymphocyte. This is going to mediate cell mediated immunity. It's going to destroy stuff. It's going to find cells and kill them. All right, so it's going to bind the CD8. CD8 positive is going to bind MHC1. MHC1 is going to be expressed on almost all cells, minus red blood cells, uh, but pretty much all cells in the body. And this MHC1 is going to take uh, intracellular antigens or proteins or sugars or anything, it's going to chop them up, it's going to spit them out and present it on the MHC1 uh, complex on the cell surface. And once on the MHC1 surface, our CTL is going to come along, it's going to use its CD8 positive uh, binding to bind to MHC1. It's going to check is that is that molecule that's being presented on the MHC1, the stuff that was from the inside of that cell, is it good? And if it's good, then it's going to leave it alone. If it's bad, that cytotoxic T lymphocyte is going to kill that cell. 
So that's going to be the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Now we've got the T helper cells. T helper cells are going to be the CD4 positive. Well, before it was CD8 positive for cytotoxic T lymphocytes. T helper cells, you may have heard CD4, CD4 positive always binds MHC2. Well, what does this mean? MHC2 is going to be found on antigen presenting cells, so like dendritic cells, for example. MHC2, so the dendritic cell is going to find antigen in the extracellular space. It's going to have arms and it's going to grab antigen. It's going to internalize it through phagocytosis. It's going to chop up that antigen and present it on its MHC2. So it's going to present extracellular stuff on its MHC2. Likewise, we're going to have the CD4 binding site come along and bind to the MHC2 on those antigen presenting cells. We're going to check is that stuff that's presenting good? And if it's good, it'll leave it alone. If it's bad, that's when our T helper cells come in. So we've got two different types. We've got T helper one, and we've got T helper two, two different types. T helper one cells, so T helper cells will differentiate into T helper one cells through interleukin 12. And then uh, T helper cells will differentiate into T helper two cells via interleukin four. So what are the two different types? Well, type one uh, helper T cells are going to pump up macrophages. Pump up macrophages. So they're gonna release interferon gamma. And that interferon gamma is gonna stimulate those macrophages to be super macrophages. And they're gonna internally kill stuff. They're gonna phagocytose stuff. They're gonna work uh, over time shift. And then also they're gonna pump up uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes as well. All right, so then we've got this T helper type two. What this is gonna do is it's gonna help B cells. They're gonna help B cells. And what they're gonna do is B cells make antibodies. So the T helper T type two cells are gonna help the B cells make antibodies. So you're gonna have a stronger humoral response. So just in recap, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from Prothymocytes made in the bone marrow. We're gonna have those B cell precursor or T cell precursors go to the thymus. They're gonna start in the cortex. In the cortex, they're under, gonna undergo positive selection, where they're gonna choose between CD4 or CD8 positive T lymphocytes. They're gonna travel to the medulla. And in the medulla, they're gonna undergo negative selection. And that's where they uh, get rid of the self-reactive uh, T lymphocytes within the body. We don't want self-reactive T lymphocytes in the body. And then from there, they go to the lymph node, and that's where they're active. And that's where we get the different types. So we're gonna have the different types, and depending on what type it is, it's gonna have different function. Hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, tried to cover all the basics, the stuff that um, you know I struggled with when I was going through this material for the first time. Um, hope you found it useful. If you did, please click like. Always like some likes. Um, I also enjoy reading your comments, so please leave lots of comments. Otherwise, um, subscribe for more videos, and peace out.